Welcome back, everyone. I'm Roger Bodwin, president of Restaurant Rockstars. Once again, I'm proud to be partnering with Performance Food Service to present a series. It's called Restaurant Success. And in this fourth installment, I'll be covering the importance of knowing your restaurant's critical numbers on a weekly basis and cost controls and how to maximize profit in your restaurant. I'd like you to know that there's more in this series, and if you haven't already seen them, please turn to leasing, owning, or buying an existing restaurant, the logistics of starting your first restaurant. In other words, everything you need to know to open the doors to your first place. Building your dream team. And my final installment coming up will be all about building your brand, creating marketing firepower and what I call affinity for your restaurant, where your customers will tell everyone they know on social media about how great your place is, and they really feel this powerful sense of loyalty and belonging, okay, where your place feels like their place. A little bit more about me. Over the past two decades, I'm proud to say I created four high-volume, high-profit restaurants from scratch. I'm also proud that I created systems that enabled my restaurant to have double the net profit of the average full serve restaurant in this country. I'm also a personal restaurant coach and the weekly host of the Restaurant Rockstars podcast. I'll tell you more about my systems in a moment. Let's talk about performance. I've been a partner and a customer of performance for over two decades, over 20 years. Great people, great products, and tremendous service. You're in great hands with performance. Let's get started with this installment. So the industry, restaurants in general, seem to be obsessed with food costs. I know you've heard that term. You may have read about it. Well, it's somewhat of a misnomer, and a lot of restaurants get this incorrect. They confuse profit with food costs. Restaurants take profit to the bank, not food costs. Let me give you an example. Let's just say a restaurant has steak on its menu and it also has pizzas and pastas on the menu. Now, even though steak may have a higher food cost at 40%, it may contribute 15, 17, or even more dollars to the profit of the restaurant. As opposed to a pizza or a pasta dish, which has a lower food cost, somewhere between 22 and 26%, that might only contribute a 10 or a $12 profit. Which would you rather sell all day long? a steak that contributes $17 or pasta that contributes $12. That's the difference. So how do you get a low food cost? It really comes from efficient ordering. That's a system. Portion controls, another important system. You have different cooks in the kitchen and consistency is super important with portion sizes. That's what loses you money and raises your food cost. You also want low waste, spoilage and theft. You wouldn't know this unless you took a regular inventory. We're gonna talk about this in a moment. Cash cows lower your food cost. What's a cash cow? A cash cow is something that contributes a high profit on the menu, but it also costs you very little to serve the customer, even though it has a really high perceived value by the customer. They see it, it looks like a value, it tastes great, it has what I call wow factor. Believe me, you can't have too many cash cows on a menu. Let's talk about what I find. I look at menus all the time because I work with a number of clients across the country. I'm a personal restaurant coach, I mentioned that. Most of the time, my first question is, have you costed out your menu recently? And sometimes they say, yeah, we've costed it out. I say, when was the last time? Oh, a couple of years ago. Or if they've recently costed it out, they're not using the data. What do I find? Their profit in all the categories across the menu are, you know, the profits all over the place. And the difference is dollars and not cents. Let's talk about categories. There's an appetizer category, there's an entree category, desserts, sometimes they have lunch categories like soups and salads or burgers and sandwiches. And what I find is the profit contribution in these items in each category varies by dollars and not pennies. Let me give an example. On the entree side, let's just say there's an entree that contributes you know, a six or a seven dollar profit. There's an entree that contributes a twelve dollar profit and even more, and it's all over the place. And every time they sell a lower profit item, it takes away the potential profit that they could have earned had they sold the higher profit item. So really what you wanna do is design a menu where there's variety and appeal to the customer, but you've got a very similar profit in each category across the board. Face it, you know, the highest wages are paid to the kitchen staff to prepare anything. So why wouldn't you wanna design a menu where everything maximizes profit? It's super important. I can help with this. 
Now, before you look at this spreadsheet, I want to tell you a story. I'm a personal restaurant coach. A while back, I was working with a client, and it was a busy lunch and dinner place. And they had 81 different items across both the lunch and dinner menu. That's a lot. I asked them, when was the last time you costed out this menu? It was about a year and a half ago. So I said, okay, we need to go back to the drawing board. Let's cost out all these items. So we worked with the chef, we had all new costing sheets, and now I had 81 different items with different costs. And I did a deep dive analysis, and based on the product mix of what they sold over the past six months, I found out that this restaurant lost $183,000 in potential profit simply because the lower profit items were the biggest sellers in each category, stealing sales from higher profit items. And every time they sold these, they lost dollars and not pennies. Let's look at the spreadsheet and you'll see what I mean. This is just the entree um, portion of my analysis. But look on the top and in green, you'll see the seafood stuffed shrimp was the number one most profitable item. And every time they sold one, this restaurant made a $17.88 profit. That's beautiful, right? Well, sure, they sold 516 of these over the past six months. But over to the right in the popularity column, it was number eighth in terms of sales. And there were 11 entrees on this menu. It wasn't number one, it was number eight. So as you go down this list, all the other entrees, I show you the quantity sold, the profit dollars lost, and most importantly, look in the second column to the right, I should say the second column to the left where it says profit spread in red, okay? Every time they sold any of these items, you can see how much dollars were lost against the most profitable item. So to bring this home, look at about three quarters of the way down, the chicken cordon bleu. It contributed 1,805 units of sales over the past six months. It was the number two biggest seller, but every time they sold it, they lost $6.24 over the most profitable seafood stuffed shrimp. The bottom line is this, over the past six months, in this entree category alone, the restaurant lost 46,000 in potential profit. And I told you that in all the categories, total combined, they lost 183,000 in potential profit. This really brings home the importance of menu design for maximum profit, provided you have that variety and appeal to the customer. Let's talk about portion controls and the importance of training. Now, every person in the kitchen has a different habit, perhaps. And if you don't have a system for this, you know, the portion controls can be all over the place. And that costs you money. And that raises your food costs. So for every single item in each category, there should be a recipe card that is a complete, accurate description of everything that goes into that dish and how to make it. There should also be a quantity template that says, for every time you make this dish, it needs so many of this and so many of that. Let's use pizza as, as an example. Okay, the pizza on the left has multiple ingredients. You can see it has mushrooms, it has tomatoes, it has basil, right? All these things go into the pizza. And if different people are making it, you might end up with more cheese on one, more tomatoes or pepperoni on another. And I speak about this with experience. My very first restaurant was a wood-fired pizzeria. And we had to use a portion cup because I noticed that I had a gal that would put cheese on the pizza. And then I had a guy who had a much bigger hand and he put double the cheese that the gal had even though she was doing it correctly. So we had to have a portion cup that was standardized for everyone. I would also do routine spot checks. And whenever a new employee was hired after they had been trained, I had to make sure that they weren't putting too many ingredients on each pizza. If a pizza recipe called for 20 pieces of pepperoni on that pizza, sometimes I'd notice 30 and I'd actually count them. I would have to stop everyone and bring it to their attention. Look, we have a template for this. This is how we do things. So you need a recipe card, you need a quantity template that spells out how many ingredients go on each dish, and then photographs are super important that show what the presentation should look like. So weights and measures are super important. If you can come up with a system of weights and measures to make sure the consistency is, is there, you'll be better off, okay? This also holds true on the bar. If you serve alcohol and if you allow your bartenders to free pour, you might have one bartender pouring a standard shot of an ounce and a quarter. That other bartender might free pour and there might be two ounces in every drink, thus costing you money. So there's, you know, therefore the need for that standardization, testing, and routine spot checks. 
Let's talk about the importance of daily break even. Let's face it, restaurants, not every restaurant is busy seven days a week, okay? Maybe there's a Monday where you're slow. Busy weekends, you know, Fridays and Saturdays always take care of themselves. But maybe a Monday or a Tuesday or even a Sunday. Well, you need to know what the daily break even number is. And that's what it costs you to open the doors to your restaurant every single day of the week just to turn the key, open the door, put the lights on, bring the staff in, have the goods on hand to sell, whether you serve one customer, 100 customers, or 500 customers. There's a simple formula for this. And I also have the template that calculates it, which I can share with you. So it's broken into two different types of costs, fixed costs and variable costs. The difference are these. Fixed costs are those expenses that you absolutely must pay that do not change month after month after month whether your restaurant is open or closed. Things like the lease on your space or a mortgage if you own the property, okay? Insurances, licenses, repairs and maintenance, all these things you have to pay regardless whether it's open or closed. Variable costs are those that go up and down based on your volume of sales, based on the days you're open. The biggest one, of course, is your payroll expense. If you're open five days a week, your payroll will be lower than if you're open seven days a week. Cost of goods, both food and beverage, will go up and down based on volume of sales and days open. Heating oil, electricity, utilities, you get the idea. So what I recommend is you literally go through all your invoices and you make a list of every single fixed cost and every single single variable costs and then you divide by 30. Again, I have the template for this and that tells you your daily break even number. Important to know. Inventory. Let's talk about inventory, food and beverage costs. When I say that to some operators, they think inventory is just kind of walking around and figuring out what they need to order this week. When in fact, it's really calculating the dollar value at any given time of all the goods that you have on hand. What's it worth at any point in time? Now you wanna know this because it's a way of understanding if you have a waste, a spoilage, or a theft problem, or if your food and beverage costs are in what I call your sweet spot. It all starts with a simple process of arranging all of your goods for efficiency in order to count it. Let's face it, most restaurants have many different storage areas in the restaurant. There might be a large walk-in cooler, there might be a large freezer, under-counter refrigerators, dry goods storage. So literally, you will have everything arranged in the way you would actually count it. So you can go from space to space to space very methodically. And you're gonna have a spreadsheet that lists every single item that you buy, that is food of course, and it's listed in the order that you would walk through the different storage areas. I have a template for that, okay? Then you get an order guide from performance. Now an order guide lists every single item that you buy from performance, okay? And it lists what it is, and the quantity it comes in. Does it come by the case? Does it come by the number 10 can? And the price you pay for it. All of this gets translated to the spreadsheet so that it automatically calculates the value at any given time when you check off, you know, I've got three sides of beef or I've got six number 10 cans of beans. You get the idea. It's gonna calculate the value at any given time and then the bottom line will tell you what your total inventory value is at that period. Okay, you wanna take inventory every single week and I'll tell you why. You wanna maintain consistency. You have to find what I call your sweet spot. Let's just say you take inventory one week and you figure out that your food cost is a 32%. You take it a week later and you find out this week it's a 28%. Then you do it again next week and you get a 34%. You really don't know what your food cost is. It's all over the map. You wanna get 30, 30.5, 30 in succession several weeks in a row so that you know that it's a constant, there's no change, it's consistent. And if you think 30% is reasonable, then that is your sweet spot. And then, and only then, you can go to a 30-day monthly inventory. But if you take inventory once a month, 29 days can go by before you figure out, I've been losing money because people are stealing from me or there's waste or spoilage. So it's really important to take it on a weekly basis until you find that sweet spot. It's also really important to take it on the same day each week. And the best time usually is after close of business on Sunday or Monday morning. 
Sunday would be great because obviously Fridays and Saturdays are the busiest day. So your inventory will be at its lowest level before you begin bringing in purchases the next week. So whether you do it Monday, that's fine, but make sure you do it early enough before the performance driver shows up with your order because then he's bringing the cases in while you're trying to count and things can be kind of lost and you know overcounted and that sort of thing. So you wanna make sure that you do it before any deliveries come in. And then I'm gonna share the formula to calculate your food cost in a moment. Moment. But accuracy in this exercise is very important. Don't be confused by this, but this is the simple inventory formula for both food and beverage cost percentage. It begins with your beginning inventory. So this would be the value the very first time you take your inventory. Then that week, you're gonna bring in purchases. Your performance driver might show up twice a week and you're gonna bring in new orders, okay? Then you're gonna subtract ending inventory, which is the second time you take that count one week later. And that equals what we call usage. Don't let me confuse you, but usage is everything that you sold that week to a customer, anything that you sold to a staff person at a discount, anything you gave away to a staff person. Maybe your kitchen policy is, you know, the kitchen eats free and there's a whole bunch of meals. So you wanna obviously keep track of this, but this all counts in your usage. Anything that got thrown away or spoiled or went bad and you couldn't sell it, is all part of your food cost and your usage. So when you come up with that usage number, you divide by your food sales, okay? Or your beverage sales, because this formula holds true for both, and that equals your food or beverage cost percentage. Don't worry if this was slightly confusing. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but again, I have a template for this. Let's talk about labor cost. Generally, labor cost is the largest expense in restaurant, of course. Now, highest wages are usually paid in the kitchen. You pay more to your kitchen staff to make the food than you do to your service staff. Why is that? Well, there's a federal law that allows what is called the tip credit. And that means that as long as your service staff, your servers, your waitresses, your bartenders are making at least the minimum wage with the with the wage you pay them, plus the tips they earn, you don't have to pay them hourly the minimum wage. Many states, if um, the minimum wage is $12 an hour, you can pay your staff $6 an hour if you'd like, provided the tips that they make at least get them up to the 12, you know, $12 an hour point. Know that the formula to calculate your labor cost is weekly payroll, if you do it weekly, or biweekly payroll, divided by sales for that period, okay? equals your labor cost percentage. And know that sales are sales of anything. That's food sales, beverage sales, retail merchandise sales, whatnot. Because obviously you have labor that goes into creating all and selling all of those things. What's a goal to shoot for? 25 to 30% is sort of the magic number, okay? To keep your labor costs in line and make sure that you're maximizing your profit in your restaurant. Your food cost and your beverage cost will vary, of course, and there's a sweet spot there, but labor is somewhere between 25 to 30, and you know you're doing well. And also, don't forget, and don't be afraid to raise menu prices. Adjust those prices because costs continually rise. So some restaurants adjust prices twice a year. Some do it once a year, but just make sure that you keep your margins intact. I'd like you to know that for true restaurant success, you really just need three things. These are all systems. Cost controls and profit maximization. All the things I just talked about are a system. A dream team staff is also a system where they're empowered to treat every customer like the most important customer and to have your back and to treat your restaurant as if they owned it. And then marketing firepower and affinity is a system also. Like you to know, all of these systems are available in one turnkey package. It's called the Restaurant Rockstars Academy and it includes all these systems. I call them foundational fundamentals to running a truly successful restaurant. So the Academy includes everything in a turnkey package. Plus there are audio tutorials that explain all this and make it really, really easy. Even the financial pieces, especially if you hate numbers or you consider yourself really poor with numbers, the tutorials really, you know, train you and everything you need to know about that. So where do you get the Academy? It's at the One Source Solution Partner page at performancefoodservice.com forward slash one source. I'd also like you to know that there's an exclusive just for performance customers discount. I'm giving 10% off the Academy just to performance customers if you visit the One Source page again at performancefoodservice.com forward slash one source. And don't forget, 
the other installments in this series, leasing, owning, or buying an existing restaurant, the logistics of starting your first place, building that dream team, building your brand, creating marketing firepower. Thanks so much for listening, and I appreciate it. I look forward to working with you.